OK, so we are just on time for this afternoon's session, which is um, an introduction to Power BI sales report. So welcome everyone to today's session. Um, I think a few more people will be joining in the next minute or two. And um, so today's session will be led by Laura Graham Brown, who is a MVP. Um, and the session will take up around about an hour with questions being answered throughout the session. So there will be some short breaks um, where you can ask questions in the Q&A. Today's session is being recorded. That will be live within the next 48 hours and it will be on the YouTube Reactor channel. As well as that, we will be asking you to fill out a short survey today. The link will be available in the Q&A along with the event code which you will need to fill out that survey. So Laura, um, if you're ready, I'll let you take away the session. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Welcome to my Power BI session. OK, um, quick introduction about me. Um, my name is Laura Graham Brown, but most people in the community know me as Laura GB. And I'm pretty active on Twitter as Laura GB. I have a blog called Hatful of Data. Um, my MVP is for business applications, so I cover all sorts of parts of the Power Platform. So that's the, the blog and the YouTube channel, which you'll also find under my uh, links to from my blog. Um, with regards to my blog, there's a QR code um, which will give you a link to a page that gives you all the resources for this session. So it gives you a copy of the data should you um, want to be able to replicate what I'm doing. And I will also put up the final Power BI report once we finish this session um, straight after. I will put a link in to that there as well. OK, so the agenda for today's session. Um, creating a Power BI report, we've got five steps. So we start by getting data. So working at actually where the data is in your organisation. And by the way, the larger organisation you're in, you're probably very aware that the harder it will be to find that data in the right format that you want it to be, get access to it and actually be allowed to see it. Then. We move on to transforming the data, tidying it up, getting your data types right, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we move on to modelling, which is getting the relationships, bring the calculations, doing the, the measures. I'll explain what a measure is later on, um, getting them right. And then comes the pretty bit, the visualising. So drawing charts, drawing cards, putting in slices um, and the final part of publishing that report up, up onto the service um, to share with your colleagues. You can do all of that up to the visualised stage without a pro licence. Only the, the pro licence only kicks in at the point at which you want to share it with people. OK, and that that point, but that's that is all I'm covering on licensing today. Um, but looking at that, that was, that was nice and straightforward and easy. But actually, if you look at it in a slightly different way. Um, you need to understand that the getting the data will take you time. The transforming and modelling will take more time than the visualising and publishing. OK, so this is trying to illustrate the amount of time it's going to take. Now, in today's session, unfortunately, I can't help you getting your data. Um, to tell you the truth, without being able to see what your data is, where it is and how it's working, it's really difficult to help on that. So we're, we're going to really start with the transforming and modelling the data, and they are your important parts. You get those right. Visualising and publishing is really easy, but you do need to get them right. OK. So. Without any more slides, I, I don't particularly like long slides. Um, we're going to. Oh, no, sorry. One more slide. Forgot. Apologies. So why are we doing this report at all? Why are you bothering? OK, why are you spending this effort to create a report? And actually, this is a really good question to answer before you start your report. So what what question is it trying to answer? So for this one, for our example today, um, we put this up as a sales report. So I'm going to go for well, what's my annual sales volume? How many items did I sell? And what's my turnover for year? So out of those items, how much money came in came into the bank? And can I filter that by the shop that sold it or the product? OK. And this is a made up company um, and it's a made up company that obviously wasn't touched by COVID because the business just carried on. 
So maybe it's online. I think that's the difference. Um, so that's the question you need to answer. And when we create the report, we'll come back and ask the question. Did we answer those three questions? OK, so. Now we get the demo slide, so I'm going to move over to um, Power BI. And when you first launch Power BI, it comes up looking like this um, with a yellow panel uh, that gives you. So on, on here, Microsoft have done a humongous amount of work. I don't work for them, by the way. I really don't work for them. Um, and, and, and I on, on occasion, I'm very rude about them. But in this, but with regards to resources to supporting uh, Power BI, they are superb. So all the what's new, there's a nice blog. The, the tutorials will, will open up, will open up you to resources that are great um, and updated and they work. And there's videos as well to support as well, as well as the whole um, Power BI community, which is vast. Um, and I will point you in towards resources for them later. Um, but once we've, once we've worked out all these things, OK, I'm going to click the cross. I don't want anything off there today. Um, also, you get your recent you'll get you get your recent ones over here. So. Here is Power BI desktop. There's various panes on the right hand side, which we'll have a look at. And they um, updated the ribbons to be the to fit in with the office ribbons. And um, on the left hand side here, we've got, we've got a couple of views which we will look at. So the first thing we need is to get to our data. OK, so I'm going to show you two going to get datas. Um, you've got a couple of little, you've got a couple of shortcuts, the popular ones at the top here. Um, we are going to go for SQL Server in a second, but actually I'm going to show you where I can find that. So there's, there's the most common ones down there. It's come another list. And if it's not none of those. If I click more. Up comes a panel showing you all of the ones that you can connect to and this list increases. Um, there, there's been new additions on quite a regular basis um, and there are some basic ones like OData, etc. But what we're going to go for is we're going to go for SQL Server. So I'm actually going to press cancel on there and I'm going to go back up to the SQL Server here. Now I've got a server set up, so I'm just going to copy. Now this isn't um, a public. I haven't made this a public server, so you can't connect up to this. Um, but the data that I'm going to connect up to in here, I've put in an Excel file, which is what's on that that blog page. So if I click OK here, what it will do behind the scenes is it will log in. Now if this was the first time I was logging in, it would ask me for my login details before it gave me this navigator window. I'm not willing to. Uh, test the demo um, gods so that I, I pre logged it in. Now I've got some products that I sell. So here's my products and I've got some shops that I sell it through. Now I'm not going to go for the sales here because that's the sales that's out of date. I'm going to go for another file for that in a moment. So I've got these two. The data looks pretty clean. I've got some nice easy columns there. So I am just going to click load. What that does is that goes and sends off the query. It's and it, it'll do a load here, and there you are. It's going and fetching the data. They're very small, so it should come through reasonably quickly. So they are seven or four rows loaded. They were tiny. If I click on over on the left hand side here, if I click on the um, the data view. And then click on products. There we are. Our data's come through, and I can click on shops, and we can see again the data's come through. So, but that doesn't give me my transactions. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go and get some more data. So, for home ribbon, get data, and this time it's going to be Excel. And I'm going to go for my sales file there and click open. And it understands, it understands Excel. So these three at the top here are tables. And so this is the file that I've, I've, I'm, I'm sharing with everybody. Um,
Well, I'm going to go for that transactions table. If I click on it, you get to see a preview. And then you tick it and you can tick multiples. Um, but this time there's some bits in here. I don't really want the shop assistant. There are some rows in here that have zeros that I don't really need. Um, so I just want to do a little bit of tidying up. So I'm going to click transform data. And this will launch another product. And uh, as an under, it's kind of product hidden behind the scenes called Power Query. Power Query's been around for a little while. It's been hidden behind Excel for a while. A really powerful tool if you wanted to get data into into Excel. And it's slowly appearing in various places. Um, you can get data into the CDS um, core data service. Um, so I've got my I've got a column here I want to get rid of, and I want to put a filter in. So let's deal with the column first, and I also I'm also going to rename that column there. Um, so I want to get rid of the shop assistant. I want to choose my columns. So on the home ribbon, we're going to click choose columns. And here's my list of columns. And I'm going to say, well, I don't want the shop assistant one. So I kept those ones and I click OK. Now what that does is over here on the right hand side where it says applied steps, we've got some steps in here. OK, so this is where it started with the source and it navigated to the right sheet. It changed some data types and then the next step down, it removed some columns. OK. So as we do things, it will add steps into here. Now what I can do is I can um, there's a zeros in here that I just I don't I don't see the point in loading them because they're not in, they're not helping my um, report. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that zero and there's a number of filters there. And I'm going to go for does not equal. And so there we are. We've got a new step in here. If you look, it says filtered rows. And if you look on the end of it, I've got a little cogwheel. If I click on that cogwheel, you'll see it gives the details of does not equal zero. OK, and so I'm going to so so I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. But any step that's got a cogwheel, you can click on and find out what it's doing. Now, I just want to illustrate one more thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a quick another choose columns. Doesn't matter which column I, I take off for a sec. Let's just go to shop for a minute. And there you are, shop's gone. And you can see it's added another step in here. Now, actually, I didn't want to do that. I want to so I'm going to remove that step. There's a little red cross on the end here, which if you hover your mouse over, it turns red. And I can click on there. Be aware. I've just removed a step. Fine. There is no undo, though. So I can't bring back that step. So before you go deleting steps, do be careful. OK, um, if you're going to get really nervous about doing it over here, um, one really quick hint is to do a right click on a your query on the left hand side here and you can duplicate it. That gives you a backup so that should you break that one, you have a duplicate. And we don't need that duplicate, so I'm actually going to delete it. Be aware there is no undo, so when you delete it, it's gone. Now, transactions three is also a bit of a weird name, so I'm just going to take the three off the end there and just call it transactions. So that was in the top right up on the, up on the properties. So there we are, I'm now done. Um, what you need to be aware of is also is, is this only looks at the first thousand data down the bottom here, it says a thousand rows. Um, when I do the close and apply, it will go and fetch all of the data. So just while waiting for that, are there any questions? Um, not used to live window, so let me just go and see if I can find the questions window. Or Emma, are there any questions? There are a couple of that, that have come through, Laura, and um, just a few comments about the sound not coming through clearly. I think it's maybe a bit crackly. OK, let me, sure if I can, let, me, let me see if I can fix that because okay. the sound is the crackly sound just sounds plain annoying. <laughs> um, Apologise for guys while I, while I quickly just share my screen. Um, Probably isn't very professional showing the screen. It's going to be in the recording, which is just going to sound slightly weird. Um, let's let's just switch my microphone to my microphone. Um, is that better? That seems to be better. Yeah. Okay. 
We will. Yeah. I should. I should have been on the Yeti one before. And yeah. have we got some questions? And there's a lot more to hear now. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, if you go on to the publish section there, you'll see. Actually, do you know, what? I'm going to take that up. I'm going to take that up there. That's probably better, isn't it? Out of out of out of out of things. So if I have a look at the published questions, just towards the end there, there's one or two. Yeah, sure. Um, am I showing the data? OK, so yes, I can. I, I am showing the data. Um, let me just quickly let me just quickly on to this one here. If you. Um, doing doing PowerPoint really badly, it would really annoy me if I was watching, so apologies. Um, if you take that QR code or go to hatfulofdata.blog, the post I put up today contains a link to the data. I only put it up about an hour ago, so it, it, it's the top one, OK? Uh, is Power BI available to all MS365 account holders? Um, free Power BI is, um, but to share your report with another person on the Power BI service, you have to have a pro license um, and to be, to be able to see a report on the Power BI service, you also need a pro license. Um, but Power BI desktop is a free app. You can download it and create reports from it. OK, so everything being shown today, apart from the final publish, is available. So I think that answers the questions. So let's go back to um, our. Oh, good. Got a thumb. Got a thumbs up on that. I got a thumbs up on sharing the data. Thank you. So let's go back into. Um, back into Power BI and if we go and have a look so that those transactions came through. Um, there's all our data and if we look down the bottom here, it's, it's a little bit small, but it says. 23,707 rows of data. OK, and that actually comes through remarkably quickly. Power BI can deal with um, vast amounts of data. Um, there are some fantastic demonstrations of dealing with millions of rows and billions of rows of data. Um, you do need to know what you're doing um, because it can go very, very slow if you get it wrong. But there are some fantastic examples. So. Let's go. So that so we've now got our data. The next thing we need to do is we need to um, have a look at the relationships between our data. Now, if you've not done databases before, um, this just takes a little bit of getting your head around. So what is it in the transactions table that will tell you which shop you're at or which shop that transactions with? And it's the shop column. And so that column you would use to look up in the shops table. So there's the shop ID. Now it guessed that for us. It couldn't quite work out the product one. OK, so in products here, I was going to rename that. Never mind, doesn't matter. Um, I've got product there um, and I've got a product ID here. So I can drag that from there to there. And. Hopefully. There we are, we get a relationship and if you hover over it, you can see product ID to product. If I right click on it, I can do the delete or I can do the properties of it and that will show me. Which column is related to which column and what style of relationship it is. OK, different styles of relationships really haven't got time to that in this one hour, but if it's it's worth having a look um, as there are various people out there, um, the SQL BI guys are brilliant about relationships. They, they they have all sorts of things on there. I will show a link to them later if also there's a link on that page I gave you. So we've put in our relationships. So now let's go and have a look at our visualize. We're just going to do a little bit of visualizing before. So I'm just going to minimize the filters one for a second. There's a little arrow at the, up here that I can hide it. And let's bring in some really simple. Let's just show how simple it is to put data to, to display data in charts. So I'm going to pick my chart type. I'm going to pick a bar chart. And I'm going to drag it to where I want it to be on the page. OK, your page goes down to this dotted line. Um, 
And then, so what, we, so what do we want to plot on that chart? And if I drag this over, you'll get a little red line when you get to the middle. OK, so it kind of shows you where the middle of the page is. And what I want to show on there, so let's go for my products. And I'm going to go for my product name. Now I'm going to drag that into the axis. And what do I want to show next to it? So what's the values I'm going to show? I'm going to go into transactions and I'm going to pick up quantity and drag it into values. OK, so there we are. We've got a chart here, the grand chalky box. Um, on that top row up there, there we are. We sold 86,000 other things. Uh, this is over multiple years. We'll talk about splitting it every year in, in, in a moment. So there's a chart. OK, we can have a little look at formatting that chart in a moment, but let's put in another chart to show you some of the nice things of Power BI. So um, apologies for anybody that likes pie charts. There will be no pie charts today. I don't like pie charts. Um, so I'm going to go for what the, 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 the other version of a pie chart, which is a tree map. Uh, it's kind of a square version of a pie chart. And let's put that in there. And you see, you get the red lines where they're trying to get help you line things up. Um, and so we're going to put into there, let's go for well, which shop? So let's just click on shops again and let's go for the shop name being my group. And let's go for the quantity again, because that's what we've got at the moment um, into there to show you who sold the most things. OK, so Charlie and Sons here uh, is, is the biggest. Um, number of things being sold and Daisy Delights in the bottom right hand corner here is the lowest. Now, if I click on Charlie and Son, do you see the chart over here gets highlighted? So Charlie and Son don't sell the Petit Chockey Box. It's down here. It's completely empty for them. Daisy Delights don't sell champagne and the over the top box. OK, so that's the so it allows you to filter and I can also click on the champagne here. And there you are. You can see the three shops that sell it. Daisy doesn't because there's nothing highlighted. So that's one of the nice things about Power BI. It allows you to quickly filter, play around with data, filter it, slice it really nice and easily. If you've got people who want raw data, they don't want to see so much of this, these coloured squares and things. You can give them numbers as well. So let's bring in So now one trick here. OK, before you add a new visual, unselect whatever you're in, because if I'm on there and I go and pick a new visual. It'll convert that visual into whatever I wanted, so I'm going to go back and make that into a chart again and unselect it and then say now I want my data card. Now all the, there's a whole set of visuals here. Um, it's worth having a play around and explore what's available. Lots of lots of us um, MVPs. One of the ways one of the ways we, we 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 do the kind of the work for the community is producing videos. So there will be videos to guide you through all these things. If there aren't, shout. Either um, I'll do your video or I'll volunteer somebody else. Um, so I can click on there. I've got my little card, and I'm going to click on quantity. Now I could drag it, or I can just say, you know, I'm going to tick it and see if it works it out for me. It put it in the right place, and there you are. I've got a 367,000 um, items. And if I click on Charlie, it gets filtered. OK, so it gets filtered to the value that I've picked. If I hold the control key down, I can pick two selections. OK, so there's all sorts of different ways of doing this. So. There are um, some nice simple visuals. Now, remember, this is like a presentation. This is like PowerPoint. Make it look nice. OK, so we're going to make these look nice in a second. But what I'm going to do firstly is I'm just going to add in some layout things that you'd expect to see on a PowerPoint slide. So on the insert ribbon. Um, there's shapes and there's a line. And you get a hot, you get a vertical line and, and you nobody ever wants a vertical line. Well, I never do. So anyway, go into so on so there are formatting that shape. So I'm now going to rotate it by 90 degrees, which makes it a nice horizontal line. And there we go. I can make it just so that it's the right size. 
make it fill the page. OK, and then let's put a title above it. So I'm going to bring in a text box. And I'm going to make my font big before I start typing because that usually helps. And this is going to be the volume report. OK. And let's do a couple more things and then I will pause to see if there's any questions. So into this one here, um, I've got quantity by shop name that might not be the title I want it to show or these might not be the colours, all sorts of things. So there's lots of formatting things you can do. So that's under the paint roller. So under the, the paint roller for format, I can turn around and go, do you know what? I want that title to not say that. So I'm going to click scroll down. Here's title. I can expand that section and I can and I'm going to call this by shop. And you know what? That font's way too small. I'm going to up that font. Eighteen, that'll do. And this one here, I'm I, if you when you click onto another visual, it keeps the formatting things here for you, which is quite nice. And this is by product. OK, so I've I've done my various parts there. I'm also going to rename the page. OK, so there's tabs across the bottom there. And the other thing, OK, to be aware of is you do need to save this report. So I am just going to save this report as my reactor report. Reactor Power BI intro. That's what it will go out as. OK, so I'm just going to quickly switch back to my other desktop so I can see if there's any questions. Is a pro license required by all the people who are going to view the report? Um, yes, a pro license is going to be needed by the people who are going to view the report. Um, which and there are various ways. So, so there are various ways, various ones of my clients have dealt with this. Some of them they've just limited it to a very few people who can see the reports. To other ones, they've they've put um, IDs up on display screens and that's how they're using them. Or in the meeting rooms, every meeting room has a pro license so that the reports can be used in the meetings. Unless you're working for a client who is a premium Power BI client um, and there, as long as your report is in a premium dedicated workspace. Um, anyone can see it. OK. So. Let's go back. So back in back into my report, so that looks great and that answers one of my questions. One of my questions was volume, so I can see my volume. Um, it doesn't quite answer my it doesn't answer my turnover at all and it doesn't answer my turnover over time. So there are two topics and we've got half an hour to do them so, and publish. OK, so let's let's deal with the um, this hasn't, doesn't involve any money. I forgot to up the font of that, but I'm sure that that will cope. So I want to talk about money. So in my transactions table here, I have which product. OK, but I don't have what price that was or that price times the quantity. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new column. So when you click into your data view, there are a couple of ribbons that appear, table tools and column tools. So my table tools, I'm going to add a brand new column. Now, when you do this, you get a you get a formula bar that says column equals. So the column is the name of the column. So I'm going to call this value. 
So the first thing I want to show you is how to get the price. OK, so this isn't quite finished, but so bear with me. So in here, we're writing in a language called DAX. And um, there's a so there's a whole set of functions. Lots of them are very similar to Excel functions, but it's Excel functions plus lots more. So related in some ways is the VLOOKUP. OK, but Related doesn't require you to specify that ha what how the relationship is built because we built those earlier. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go. So I want the products price. And close bracket on the end and press return. Now the SQLBI guys who I mentioned earlier are the, the um, gurus of um, DAX. And they have amazing courses that do introduction. They have amazing free courses that do introduction and will help you start start off on this, as well as um, their their course on learning DAX, um, the, the paid version is awesome. It's absolutely amazing course. So I've got related there. Well, that just gives me the price. I need to times it now. So I've got lots of eights because it was product six. And I need to times that by. So I put in a times, same as you would in um, Excel. And if I type in QTY, it well, it's just a Q will give me um, help. Um, IntelliSense, that's what I'm looking for. Transactions quantity. OK, so it's got the table name plus the column. It's important to have. So if I press return on there. It does some calculating. And there we are. H, um, Eight times one gives me gives gives me the normal eight. Seven times eight gives me fifty six. Great. So I've got a value column. OK, so that's so that gives me a calculation per row. Now you could just put that onto the onto a new chart. So I'm on onto if you're wanting to know the, the actual value that would add up. OK, but for various but for a number of reasons, it's good practice for not just to dump it on a data card like we did with this one. But I actually create a thing called a measure and that does a calculation for you. So we're going to put another card here with it on. Um, so I'm going to go into modeling. And in modeling, we're going to go for a new measure. Now go play with the quick measures. There's some really cool things in there, but I only have an hour. So we're going to go for a new measure, which we're going to write by hand. OK. It's going slowly, right? So I'm going to call this. Turnover. OK, let's move that point right the way. Turnover. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to. If I hold. Is he, are you going to play ball? Yeah, you are playing ball. Turnover equals. Sorry. And we're going to go for the sum. Do you see? And, and it, it's it's standard. X, Excel kind of style function and then it's asking well, wh which column do you want to sum? Well, I want to sum. If I go for the transactions column, so I typed in TR to get my transactions and we're going to go for if I scroll down a little bit, there it is transactions value. Now, whichever whichever table you had selected at the point which you started writing your measure, it puts that measure in now. So it's sitting down here. So there's a couple of things to be aware of. I've got a measure tools ribbon here. Now I'd like to a couple of things. Firstly, it's money. So let's format it. It's not dollars. We're in the UK here. Um, play ball. I don't know which picked there. But I'm just going to try and change it to uh, this rate. It's going to end up being dollars. It really is going to end up being dollars because the my, my my mouse pointer is misbehaving on me. I'm going to move it and then I'll come back and try and change it. Um, so home table, where is it going to sit over here to be able to find it? So I'm going to um, come into here and just move it to tran transactions. OK, and it should move and there you are it's put down there fields are listed alphabetically 
OK, just remember that when you're searching for that field, you can't remember. And my classic is I can't remember what I called my measures. So let's go for our turnover report. So I'm going to give us a new tab for the, the data card. I'm going to do another data card, but I'm going to put it on this card, this page instead. So a data card. And we're going to put in. Turnover. And they are, see, it has got dollars. Um, if I get time, I'll fix that. And there we are, we've got 4 million or 4.01 million. So it's it's chosen the formatting from how I did my turnover over here. OK, and I can then put in a chart to show how much that is per shop or a table. Let's go for a table. We haven't seen one of those yet. So if I come in and put a table and I bring in my shop name. And I bring in my turnover. Do you see it names the column? It names the column at the top here the right name because you gave it a measure. If I hadn't given it a measure, it would have given me um, a, a generated column and it wouldn't necessarily be what I wanted it to be. OK, so that works quite well. I'm not going to move it either. It's really not playing ball with me today. Let's just drag that down to down to here. OK. So that gives me my turnover. So that kind of gives me my next question. What's my turnover? But it doesn't totally because I wanted my turnover over a period of time. OK, and I've got a date column. OK, if I go back and look at my data, I've got a date column here that goes back to the beginning of January uh, in January 2017. and goes all the way up to yesterday. So I want to be able to um, be able to do some date intelligence. Um, use some data intelligence inside my report. So in order to do that, you have to create a calendar. If your report includes dates, your report should include a calendar. So. I'm going to go through. Um, I, I've actually done this what I'm about to do in a video, um, so. I'll go through it, but there are other things we can do. And then, so we're going to start off by creating a new table. OK, so I'm in the data view and I'm going to do a new table. And it's going to give me um, table equals. So I'm going to put in the word um, I'm going to put in calendar and then equals. Now, there is a lovely function in here, and this shows me all the functions that will produce a table. And there's one here called calendar auto. And what calendar auto does is it goes and has a look in your model for dates, and it will produce you enough dates um, to, for, it'll produce your calendar big enough to cover them all. And if you also put in an end of year month, it will expand it up to make sure you've got complete financial years. So if I put in calendar equals calendar auto 12. I will get a list of dates, OK? So the next thing I want to do is I want to add in a new column. And we're going to do it so that we can do things by the year, OK? So this column is going to be called year. And I'm going to make use of the year function. And the, what I want to base this off is the date. So I just put in date like that. Now, if you get an option here to do dot anything, don't ignore them. Just press escape. Um, I realize I've turned it off on my version of Power BI. Um, I'll show you how to turn it off. I'll show you how to turn that off if, if it's annoying people. So if I press return. It gives me a year column and we're going to add in one more column after this. It is really being slow. Um, we're going to add in one more column after this for the month. OK, now I don't want month one, two, three, four, five. I want months that are formatted as letters. OK, so I want Jan, Feb, etc. So we're going to go for another new column. Now in Excel, this function is called text, 
but in here this the function we're going to use is going to be called it's called format but it's exactly the same so i'm going to call this month and so i'm going to format my date column in the format of three m's same formatting trick as in excel to use the the d's m's and y's and capital m's means you get months rather than minutes so if we press return on there we should get a lot of jans because all of these are january okay so that gives me my year and my month that's great so if i but before i do anything i've added a new table you anytime you add new data you should get in the habit of going back into your relationships and coming into here and doing a relationship into here so i'm going to take that date and put it onto that date there. OK. And that gives me date to date. The other trick, the other thing, not trick, the other thing that you should do as well, which I'd forgotten to do, but it's good practice, is to go back into the data view and on your table tools ribbon, um, click off the column that it's, 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 there we go. If this is grayed out, just click onto a different column and it'll sort itself out. But mark table as a date table. Okay, this will help um, with, it understands that this is the, the raw data, the raw date table. Um, and I'll ask you which column is the date column. So we've only got one column to pick and they are validated successfully. Click OK. Now, if I'm doing this date table for a client, uh, we add in all, all the columns they could possibly ever want. Which day of the week it is? Is it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? All those kind of things. We add them all in. So now I can give us a chart. So let's start with a really simple chart. Let's go with a, a column chart. Let's make it put it down here and let's make it nice and big. And let's go with bringing in the year onto the axis and let's bring in the turnover to the values so there we are we get turnover by year which is not a bad title and there we are we've got our columns now it's obviously 2018 had a bit of a blip and 2020 is having a bit of a blip um because that's not halfway through we're, we're halfway through a year and we haven't got halfway but hey that's working right what I now want to be able to do, though, is I want to be able to click on a column and I want to show it through the year. So I want to do drill down. Now, drill down is really easy. OK, so we're going to pick month. And we're going to put it under our year. So I've got year and I've got month underneath. And now I've got a lot of little icons at the top here. So I'm going to click the drill down one, which is that little down arrow that says drill mode is on. There's also a data drill one here that lets you do drill down is on. OK, and I can click on my. So let's go for 2019 because that'll give me a complete year. And there we go. There's a whole lot of that doesn't work. I start in December and ends in January. That's kind of right, but not really because February comes second. So that's sorted wrong. So let's try fixing that. So we're going to go onto our three dots here. And we're going to um, sort by year month. OK, well, that hasn't fixed it either. Um, but if you notice, there was something in here as well that said sort ascending rather than descending. So let's try that. That is sorted. OK, it, it's not sorted in the order we want, but it is sorted because if you look down the bottom here, we've got April, August, December. That's alphabetical. So I don't want my months to be sorted alphabetical. I want them to be sorted by the month number, but it doesn't know that. OK, so. Let's go back to our calendars. And we're going to add one more column. And I'm going to call this column. Month sort. OK. And this is literally just going to be the month function. Of that date. OK. And the, I'm then going to highlight my month column. OK, 
and on the column tools ribbon there is a sort by column and in here I, it, by default it sorts by itself i'm going to sort by month sort and if i so once it's done that if i go back into my visuals there you are i've got january february march across there and it's sorted okay and i can drill back up again and i can go into a year now we sell champagne and flowers so there's our peak for valentine's day and there's our peak for christmas okay now i would want to do things to this report i'd want to put the title in etc etc but i am aware that i've only got quarter an hour left so we're going to come back onto our volume page here and we're going to do one thing onto this and then we're going to go back onto our turnover report and do one thing on there as well so on here okay this is all of my data i want to filter this by year okay i want to pick which year i'm looking at so this is brings in a very important visual but before i do that i've just realized i haven't looked at questions so i'm just going to quickly switch across i'm going to come back and do filters in a second nope we're all right we're all right i'm going to go oh no we're not it says twin oh there's there's i've been scrolling down my apologies Will you showcase building relationships between two data sets? Um, I, I would if I could, but two data sets hasn't yet been um, put into Power BI. Um, is this, um, if that's not what you mean, um, reach out to me on Twitter if, if that doesn't make sense or, or put another question in. Is this on tutorials? Yes, yes. Uh, what I'm doing is covering the tutorials. Or is this something we have to learn along the way? I wonder if that's related to the top question. Um, there's lots of learning along the way, but lot, all of what I'm doing today is covered on the on the Power BI tutorials. Does connection to the database persist? Um, is a published report up to date? Um, I will talk about refreshing. Um, that's a really good question. I like it. I will talk about refreshing when I get to publish. Would you recommend building complicated reports? Which take a long time to uh, take a long time to compute in Excel in Power BI. If you're building them in, in Excel, yes, move them to Power BI. Um, there are some reports I have not yet moved across, but most of them I have now. Um, and if there are reports you haven't yet worked out how to move across and you can't work it out, reach out to us in the Power BI community. Um, you will get help. It's amazing how much help you will get if you ask nicely. Um, is there any way to have user input data into the report? Um, putting yes, there, no. It's, it's a very simple answer. Yes, there are ways of doing it using a power app embedded in the report, but it's it's an entertainment um, and it doesn't work instantly always. So you have to be think careful about that. Multiple visuals at the same time to play a common format. Um, there's. Um, I don't know, JC, I don't know the answer to that one, but I'll think about it. But what you can, there is a format painter. Um, there is a format painter that will allow you to paint from one visual to another. I'll show that in a second. Um, style guides for the report layouts you could recommend. No, but it's something I've been asked for by two clients in the last week. So therefore, um, follow me on Twitter and, and pester me on Twitter if I haven't posted. I need to find those. Um, can you rectify them in Power BI? Yes, you can. Power Query um, is, is, is how I do it. Um, there are ways of filtering it in Power Query um, to fix it. but sourcing out in the data is the better is the better plan but you can fix it in power query um by default the visualizations i had you unlink uh, a good good really good question that one about unlinking visuals i will show that in a second the more data you place in this will it make the power bi run slower it'll make the refresh run slower but it won't make it, the report run slower the more visuals you put on a page make the report run slower if I give Power BI for Excel automatically, am I able to get BI to move this automatically to another Excel sheet or another form, or do I have to do this manually? Um, there are ways of transferring. Um, there are uh, my data's moved to a different workbook. There are ways of doing it. You don't have to completely rebuild the whole thing, but it takes some fiddle. Um, perhaps that's a, a video I ought to be putting together. Would you be able to show turnover by week? Yes, if you added a week column to your calendar. Okay. If I get time, I will do that. Um, the one thing I wanted to show, stopping visuals reacting to each other and um, paint copier and slicers. Hold on to your hats, guards. Not what I want to do. Hold on to your hats, guys. With, 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 yeah, we'll try. So 
let me what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is do a slicer first and then come back to questions. OK, so next question. So slices, let me, let me introduce slices and I'll, and I'll think and I'll work out some things. So if I bring in a slicer, slicer is a really good way of filtering data without having to click on visuals. So I've got a little slicer up there. I'm going to put a year into that slicer. So there you are. It gives me a, a drag. This is the default for numbers. So there you are. That's so that will change all my numbers to be just 2019 and 2020. I don't want that. I just want one year. So if you in the very top, so wait a minute, I think it's a bit taller. This is the, this is one of the tricks. Make it taller and then you get a little drop down in the top right hand corner. And there it shows you all the differences you can put into here. OK, so I kind of go for a list and they are I get a tick list. So there we are. We can tick to say 2019. But thinking about people using this on a touch screen or fat fingers or you, you don't want a tick list. You want something that people click buttons. Um, this isn't very intuitive. You click on the formatting. Hey, mouse, listen, click on the formatting under general orientation. You change that. To horizontal, OK? And there we are, we get buttons. That, that makes sense, doesn't it? Not. Um, just now and again, just now and again, there are the odd things that don't make sense to me. Possibly due to other people. You've got a little year there. I want to get rid of that year. So that is also under the formatting and there's a slicer header. So I'm just going to say, no, I don't want it because it's obvious it's a year. And there you are. There's my report. I can click on buttons. And it changes my report to show what's going on. OK. Um, with regards to, um, so I'm just going to bring in another data card just so I can show you a thing here about formatting. So I'm going to bring in a, another card here. And put into it the turnover. OK, now I could come into here and I could put in um, my data label. Let's give it a different color. I'm not good on colors, by the way, guys, so I'm going to pick a, a foul color. I apologize now. Let's go for lilac. Yay. Um, now, could I have done that to two at the same time if I press control? Wait a second. There's, there's a new thing they brought out. There's a new thing they brought out so that actually I can use a mouse pointer. It's not going to play ball. I've got too many things on that page. I can click and I can drag both of them. And yes, I can come in here and I could go in to that data label and pick a color that's not lilac because that is really revolting. Um, there we go. Let's pick a different color. Um, so yes, you can to answer that question, but also um, you can use Format Painter to copy a format round in circles. So I could take this one here and do Format Painter it onto there. And there you are. I get the bigger title. OK, now the other question before I before I do publishing, I am aware I haven't published yet. Um, or done much about slices there. I've done videos on slices. OK, there are lots of videos on slices that are, are on my blog, if not uh, um, are on other people's. And there are there are things on the Power BI service. So uh, reactions between. Rea so if I pick one visual. And I go onto the format ribbon. OK, there's an edit interactions and that will give you little logos above all the other visuals. So what I can do is I can go. So here I'm just gonna make this one. I'm just I'm, I'm just going to swap around just for a second. Just just to make this one a bit smaller. It, it takes a bit of fiddling this. So that one there I could turn around and go. Do you know what? I want you to. Um, have no effect on that report there. So now if I pick a dozen roses. It alters these ones up here, but these stay the same. It doesn't matter what I do over here. It doesn't affect it. OK. Um, if I change that to be back to being the highlighting, we get it so it reacts like that. Or if I go to filtering. It'll go like that. So that if I go for um, champagne. 
one of the shops I thought didn't sell it. There we go. Champagne in 2019. Daisy doesn't sell it. OK, so this is the different ways of getting it to react. OK, and whether these and you, but it takes a lot of time to work through getting all the reactions right. So. Um, my report's done. I'm going to pretend my report's done. It's not the prettiest report in the world and I haven't done. Um, I haven't renamed pages. I have done all sorts of things. Um, but my report's done. So I'm going to publish it and I want to share it with my team. So I'm going to click publish. And it, it asks you to save whether you've just saved or not. It'll ask you to save. And then it's going to ask me where do I want to publish it? Now, in my tenancy, I've got shed load of workspaces. Come on, system. Where does it put that box? There we go. So uh, these are all the workspaces that I've got access to. OK, so I'm going to put it in to Alpha. And I'm going to click select. Now, if you haven't got a license, you can publish it, but you can only publish it to my workspace. So I'm going to click select. I wonder which one that did. It doesn't matter. I think it tried to publish it twice because I clicked the button twice. So there you are. It says it's done it. And if I click on Open Reactor Power BI Intro in Power BI, it will fire me off into Power BI Online. And this is the logo of, of it loads. So the Power BI thing strobing in the background is it loading the report for you. Um, and it loading up the data. OK. So here is my report. I can click on. I can click on the things and it filters just the way that I, ex I expect it to filter. Um, I can click on the I can click on the slices and it will sort it out as well. And over on the left hand side here, I've got the pages. OK. So this allows me to go through and I can see in the different years. Now, be aware. I left this down drilled into one year. OK, I have a, a video about how to turn this over. If not, um, Accountant BI has a video, I think, about how to change this title so you can tell which year you're in because that helps. Um, but because I published it filtered, it comes up as filtered. Um, back on my back on my this report, I can reset to the default. Uh, will change all the filters that have been set. OK, so this is how people are seeing it. OK, um, how you find reports when you first log into Power BI. You will get a page looking something like this um, and down here are workspaces and this will show you all the workspaces that you've got. OK, so this gives me the, the opportunity to go and find workspaces or my workspace according to what license you've got. If you are on a client who does have premium, I don't have premium. Um, it's it's I, I really uh, but if you've got a thousand users who are using Power BI. It's 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 about worth it. Um, there's a diamond that appears here that will show you it's a um, premium workspace and there anybody can see that report who has access to your workspace. OK, now if I go into my workspace here, Here's my workspace. Here's all the reports. Um, so I've got reports, which are these ones, data, um, data sets. So this is I, I haven't got time today to explain the refreshing apart from I'll show you where it is. OK, my report I've just done won't refresh online because one of the files was local to me. OK, but if I go for one of my other ones up here, if I go for my one that's here, my issues report, can't remember where that data is, but anyway, and I come into settings, not the report, Laura. Um, cancel. Uh, we go to the data set, my apologies, and into here, and I go to settings. If you've got all your login right, okay, so your data source credentials, 
you can come into scheduled refresh. I've obviously not got my credentials sorted out in here, but you can turn on your refreshes here. So let's go to sales. I've, there we are. I can turn on my refresh there. So this is my, my, my precursor to this to this one here. And I can say how often I want it to refresh daily or weekly. And I can pick what time I would like it to refresh. Um, Oh, it wants it wants what time it is. So let's go for AM. And if I go back into my data set now, I can see on the sales one there, it's showing you the net when the next refresh is going to be that's shown there. OK. So. We've taken our report, we've um, done lots of things, OK? Uh, lots of things in in the report we had. Let me just convince it that I really do want to come back into here. So lots of things we've done in there. Um, it's done in an hour. Um, I'm just about to go over the hour. I am aware. I am aware of that. Um, so the turnover by week, add a week column. So that gives you the same as turnover by month. OK. OK, do your question about I have Power BI desktop and I want to share my report. My client also needs to have Power BI desktop and load the app that I share by email. Um, if you send in the, the, the PBIX file, yes. OK. Um, there are ways of uh, externals coming in to if they've got access to your um, Power BI workspace. There are ways of getting them to have access, but if you're willing to send them the Power BI desktop report. Now be aware that that report includes um, you trying to get the connecting up to data. So they won't be able to refresh because it's got your credentials in it and they probably haven't got access to your systems. OK, but one of the other things to consider. If you're OK with them not having the dynamic side of it, if I click into here and I go into uh, my report. Um, there is an export up here. I can export to PDF or to PowerPoint. PowerPoint will give you that as a slide um, and PDF will give you that as a page. OK, so there are ways of giving it out if you just want a hard copy, um, if that will work. Um, that that does work for some clients. It doesn't work for others, but it does work for some clients. OK. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that one. OK, so. Let's 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 quickly go through the, the, the slides back to here, back to my demo. There we go. So resources, Gynacube, Gynacube are, are two nutty men. Um, I'm perfectly willing to call them nutty to their faces, so I think I'm allowed to say that, um, who do amazing videos. They work for Microsoft, but the guy in the cube um, channel they run is they do in their own time. They're not paid by Microsoft to do it. Um, they do a mad Saturday call where you can go and ask questions, uh, which is completely mad because they end up with way too many questions that they can't answer in the time. Um, then then there are the, the guys I've mentioned a couple of times in the presentation, the SQLBI guys, uh, the Italians, Marco and Alberto. They know DAX. They know DAX inside out, back to front and upside down. Um, I have a blog site uh, which I put posts up to and I put and I and, and I also have um, a YouTube channel. Um, the links are on my blog site, hatfulofdata.blog. Um, and there are lots of others. There are lots and lots of other people out there doing some amazing work out there. Um, the list is the list is endless. The, I've only got a short list on the page that was there, but that list will be going back, going up to some people I've completely forgotten to put in there. Um, but so. Please do feedback. It is the only way that um, us presenters get to improve. Um, and we get to do things. We, we get to do things that fit you better. So please do put in some feedback. Um, it will be going via Emma. It's not to me personal. OK, I, I'm hoping I get a chance to see it, but uh, it's it's from there. So are there any more questions? I realize I'm over time. Sorry, Emma. 
No, don't worry. That's absolutely fine, Laura. Um, oh, there are questions. Oh, no, it's just thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I've... Reach out to me on Twitter, guys. Um, reach out to me on reach out to me on my YouTube channel. Um, if, there's, if, there's, if there's videos you can't find, um, ask me to do them or, or I'll, ask the, I'll ask the guy in the queue to do them. <laughs> I'll bless them. <laughs> OK, thank you for coming, guys. Thanks so much, Laura. That was an excellent session. And I think um, you can tell by all the feedback coming through now and all the brilliant questions that come that have come through as well. Um, just to end, I'm going to share a quick slide um, with just some ways for people to engage with the Microsoft Reactor a little bit more. Um, so I'll very quickly share this slide. Let me share here and then go back on just while emma is doing that i'm going to re-emphasize the reactor do some amazing things they really do uh, here we are share Okay, <laughs> so um, many of you would have joined through our Meetup page. If you're not on that, you can see a full list listing of all of our online events at the moment. So we do have about maybe two, three, four per day. And um, so do follow us on there and you can sign up for free. All of our sessions are free to attend. And um, we're on Twitter as well. So our um, tag is um, on the screen now. Our YouTube Microsoft Reactor channel is where all of these event recordings go. So if there's part of it that you've missed today or that you want to refresh on, that's where you'll find everything. It usually takes about 48 hours for these videos to go live onto that channel. Um, and last but not least, we have a new Reactor newsletter. So the aka.ms link is where you can sign up to that newsletter. So it is monthly that we'll go out and send you all of the online sessions, how to sign up, more information about them there as well. And um, so I think that just about ties it up, Laura. Thank you so much again for today's session. And thank you to everyone as well who attended.